Hello there. I hope you had a great daylight savings today. I definitely got extra sleep in, which was great because I currently have an iPad game, which I'm sure, you know, I've had the iOS or that like every other like Android Google game that you can play. Oh my gosh, it is like so challenging, which is helping me actually because as a brain cancer survivor, I'm Rose, this is Olga, and I have brain therapy. Is that really what it's called? No. I go to the physical therapy office. Physical therapy actually has speech therapy in the office itself. Ironically, I actually grew up with a speech impediment, and so I had speech therapy, but this was like at Children's Hospital, and so it was like just on a different floor, like it was in there versus like this, you know, all age physical therapy is like its own little area, its own little building. And so I'm there. And so my, my helper, my speech is a speech therapist. And so you have physical therapy, you go a little deeper, you got speech therapy. And then an even more specialized thing from there, I have cognitive therapy, which is to help my short term memory. And so this is my brain therapy I'm having, you know, since Olga here on my left temporal lobe has actually hit a lot of my like short term memory <laughs> problems. And so I've been going to cognitive therapy. It's easier for me to say brain therapy, like cognitive therapy. That's like so many syllables. Anyways, every time I go so far, it's like working on things that I can remember. So each time I go, we're either writing a list. So here, I'm going to go through these with you in a second. Or we make a new one and then we'll see how many I remember after, you know, maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. Or if I have it like the next week. And so this week, I have, I have my next appointment tomorrow. And so we're going to see how much I remember from these Thanksgiving fun facts. All right, so there are 10. We'll see how I do. All right. So anyways, I have grade four brain cancer, also known as glioblastoma. I've been having brain therapy sessions, working on this short-term memory. All right, so it's on this piece of paper. I've written it down a few times to help. Oh, that's why it's so wrinkled. I'm taking this, I'm not watching it. My other papers I wrote with my niece because we went through them together. She thinks they're funny. All right. These are my bear, panda, Dr. Lunar Bear, my elephant friends. They've got my list. So here we go. 10 fun facts. The first Thanksgiving, which we're doing Thanksgiving facts because it's November, duh. And I've got my Thanksgiving sweatshirt, which I spontaneously made the night before Thanksgiving last year, which happened to be the 400th anniversary since the first Thanksgiving that's a fun thing. It has funny eyes, but it was a very spontaneous uh, thing to make. So 1621, and now it's, of course, 2022. So this will be the 400th and first Thanksgiving. Kind of crazy. We're going back, So that's one. Going back to that very first one, the second thing is they didn't have any forks. They had spoons and they had knives, but no forks. Which, if you think about it, forks are a little bit harder to make, I guess. Like, Imagine if they were like, like I think that most of them of like their spoons at that time were like carved out of wood maybe like from a tree, which I should know this. I should check it out, but that's a lot of work. And I'll probably forget that I was like thinking of this anyways. But my brother-in-law who happens to be a chef was like, they probably had sporks because they had a spoon and knives. Why not? That could probably turn into a spork. Why not? So... But what do you use, your spoon or knife? When actually, if we're in Italy, think about it, let's be real, bread is just as much of a utensil, and who doesn't have good rolls on Thanksgiving? Now, Thanksgiving, we all eat turkeys. So we have the first, so the first one, they had spoons and knives, but no forks. The biggest turkey found was 86 pounds. Now, at one point I was like, is it 84? No, it's 86. And... I remember that because the average American eats 16 to 18 pounds of turkey, like their own, like per year. And then I was thinking about it, I was like, does someone think I have more than that? Like, I'm a big turkey eater. I like it. 
So 86 pounds is the biggest one, but then we have 16 to 18, like average person. Now, the average turkey size each year for Thanksgiving is 15 pounds. Like that's what's bought. Ironically, most that are bought for the entire, like for Thanksgiving, just for that day in the country is 280 million. I, I'm still undecided if that is like a lot or a low number based on how many people we have in our country. I mean, but then you have to think it's like the turkey for the family. How big is the family? How big are you actually getting? Either way, that's a pretty good number. Now, for number seven, I'm going to give you a second, which this one I keep forgetting, but probably because it's the most, I can't think of the word now, but the, like, the state that buys or the most turkeys for Thanksgiving. All right. So you're probably not going to get this one. And now I already forget if it's like seven or eight. But which state Oh, are the highest consumers of turkey? All right. I'm going to go through in my brain how far I am. And you get a second to think which state gets the most turkeys for Thanksgiving. All right. So I have... 1621, no forks, 86 pounds was the biggest. We usually eat 16, 18 pounds per person each year. The average turkey size is 15 pounds. And the average is 200, or no, each year 280 million by them. Okay, so here's number seven. The state with the that are the highest consumers of turkey California. No, if you're from California, I, you know, no offense, but I didn't expect that. I honestly thought it was like Texas. My brain went to Texas. I don't even know why. Because like here I live in the Midwest and we have so many turkeys around. Like I, can't, I really can't, don't understand how it's California as the like high consumers of turkey, but whatever. That's fine. All right. Now number eight. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. His fleece is white as snow. Well, guess what? Sarah Josepha, whose last name I don't remember, but she wrote that song and she also convinced Abraham Lincoln to make Thanksgiving a national holiday. Like imagine her turning that song into like a turkey song and being like, you know, you want to make this a holiday because we love to eat our turkey. Now, that's how it became a holiday. But guess what? Ben Franklin wanted to make turkeys our national bird. All right. I made a pretty cool turkey sweatshirt. The thing about it, like, now I will say, I couldn't think, I couldn't, I know what our national bird is. It's the bald eagle. But when we were first making this list, I was like trying to think about it. It's like, I know what it looks like. I was like, the, the bird with the white head. It's an eagle, but it has a white head. It took me like, like I said, this is for short-term memory improvement. And I can't remember it's a bald eagle because it's white feathers that like make it look bald can, can compared to it's like brown feathers. You know, crazy thing. But it was Ben Franklin that wanted to make turkeys the national bird instead of the bald eagle. And I'm just going to put it out there. If a turkey was our national bird, would you still eat it? Like, that's, that's, that's my question about that. But that's what Ben Franklin wanted. All right, now I believe I'm on to the last one. Some big ideas or common things that people do with their leftovers. All right, the first one. Now, this is like my go-to that I'm pretty sure every single person goes to is make a sandwich. Take your leftover turkey and let's be real. Usually people have leftover turkey for the reason of just having leftovers after making the huge meal for like so many people, it's like, why bother having to cook again? Like over the next few days, sandwich, you know what? My go-to have your leftover roll, put your turkey on it and some mashed potatoes and then dip it in your gravy because it just sounds good. You know, it does. But then some of the other things that are pretty common, chili soup or stew, which to me, that's like easy. You just throw your stuff in like, piece of cake, which also throwing it all together, a casserole, which, and then I was thinking about it. It's like what you make is probably pretty close to a shepherd's pie with like 
whatever potatoes you have left. And so it's like, what, like, that, that made so much more sense too. Like you just put it all in your casserole dish and then like easy go to, you just, you don't have to get out each into like individual thing and put it on your plate to put in the microwave. You've already just got it in one big thing together. Piece of cake. <laughs> As if it's the size of cake that you just made. Huh? Anyways, this last one, which blows my mind because I don't really understand is a burger. Okay, think about how your turkey is made. And now you have to take your turkey slices and grind it up to turn it into a burger. Like, are you eating it like a sandwich and just warming it up and calling that a turkey burger? Like, I don't get it. It's not the same thing. So my brain is like, how is that even on the list? It's always, you know, you never know. Anyways, this is like the kind of thing that I'm doing on a regular basis. I'm going to check the list now because tomorrow I have my brain therapy session for this week. And let's see if I missed anything. All right. Pilgrims don't have forks, but they have their spoons and knives. Why not make the sporks? All right. Franklin wanted the turkeys instead of, I literally, if you see it here, it says white headed eagles. Because my brain, like literally that short moment, <laughs> but it is the bald eagles that I would never eat. So why make the turkey? Anyways, you know, 1621, we normally have 15 pounds, but the biggest, 86. Californians, it still blows my mind. Hmm, here it is. Sarah Joseph Hale is the one who made this a national holiday. And then, yeah, you know, I think I, I did get them all. It's still the burgers, the weirdest one. But Sarah Joseph Hale, if you never heard of her, she wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb. And she got Abe Lincoln, our nice president, to make this a national holiday. Which, if you're American, it's coming up. Maybe you need to find a nice turkey applique sweatshirt from Quilting Fabric. Because guess what? My sister has a business called ljcreationco.com. Well, oh, that's her website for L LJ Creation. And just so happens that I made this last year before Thanksgiving the night before to wear the turkey trot that morning so that I can eat even more mashed potatoes. We just put some on her website or if they're not on there right now, they will be tomorrow and I'll put the link below if you're interested in having your own. Fair warning, it looks better than this. Like the eyes are a lot better looking. They're not so like, why did I wake up for this? Trust me. They're cool, but um, I am a little bit off track. I, you know what? It's funny because like I have a list of stuff to make sure I stay on track, and I, I do have like show my sweatshirt because it's so cool. Like, think about it. We always have our ugly Christmas sweatshirts. Not that it's ugly, but don't you want a fun Thanksgiving one too? I think it's a fun thing, and so. You know, I'm so off track, like being on here and just like checking in, seeing if there's anyone who have questions about brain tumors, which you, you can kind of see my bald spot. Let's see. Uh, kind of. Not really as much. It's just for my scars. I have no shame of sharing that. But if you have any questions of that, FYI, it has been four years, over four years since I was diagnosed. So there you might get a very low number when you're diagnosed, but there's always the chance that you surpass that quite well. And then, you know what? Sometimes they talk to you about eating really well, but Thanksgiving is a national holiday, so it's okay if you have extra carbs on that day. But if you're on chemo and it makes you sick, I am so sorry. And just, that's all right. You'll have next year's Thanksgiving. That's a nice thing. Or you can have a turkey shirt instead of it on your plate. So, and then also, I'm a brain cancer survivor. And one of the biggest things that has helped me get through everything, especially when I was going through um, my diagnosis, my treatment, was to have many prayers and positive thoughts um, with my name mentioned and Olga to kind of knock her out. And so I just want to thank you if you are here and take a second and just, you know, if you can add me to your prayers that I continue to, you know, 
be here as a survivor and then also that my short-term memory with my my brain therapy is continuing to improve as well as those that you know who have any form of cancer just have something you know just take a moment and you know for me it's thanking God that I am through and that I got through all those side effects of really high doses of chemotherapy of radiation and how it affected my friends and family around me. I just thank God so much for being there to get us through it. So I always pray that any other person, you know, even if you don't know someone and they could be going through something else, I ask that you think of that person, that you pray for healing and, you know, that their health gets better, at least, especially getting rid of these side effects because it's like, I, you know, I love Thanksgiving because I love, I just love that, the Thanksgiving meal, like turkey, mashed potatoes, and gravy, like that's my go-to. And I was, thankfully when I was on radiation and chemotherapy, I was like on a break time when it was Thanksgiving and I was fine. At least I remember it was, but it's been four years. So <laughs> there's a possibility that I was not, but if you can, again, take a moment Ask for, you know, if you don't believe in God, you know, the choice is up to yours. He is my healer. He's my savior because look at this. I was told 12 to 15 months and I've already surpassed four years. So I thank him every single day. And, you know, if you have a moment to also mention a woman named Rebecca, I just recently heard her story and this is why I'm asking you to just take a moment. Her name is Rebecca um, and I just met her quite a few years ago. She had breast cancer but had like completely surpassed it several years and now she was recently diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And the amazing thing about her is she actually has this um, See, now I can't remember the what you technically call it. It's called mom, which is mind over matter. And she has this huge form of cancer. Yeah, I know I have grade four brain cancer, but pancreatic cancer is really caught actually in time to make it through so far, like to be able to even get through it all. Um, it's not, like I said, it's, it's usually not caught until it's pretty far along. And so to be able to be going through that, and she's awesome because she has a great family. She also is a grandmother, and so I think she needs more time to be with her grandbabies because they're all still young. But for her to be able to share her story and just get that information to others where it's not even necessarily about herself, but sharing her story to see how it helps you know, you understand. That's why I share my story. It's just to help you know that like there are like we each have our different way of getting through. And so like you don't necessarily have to take each step the way someone else does, but it's just a reminder that like find what makes you happiest. And like that mind over matter, like for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I feel like, I feel like crap today. Like I'd be going through radiation. I don't want to do anything. All I want is like ice cream, but then I try and eat it and I just can't. And I literally, I just can't. I can't even on some of those days. And so, but for me, I'd be like, that's fine. Today, I I feel like crap. That's that's 100% fine because I have tomorrow. And tomorrow is one day closer to getting off of radiation, finishing chemotherapy and being done with this lifestyle hopefully getting back on track to what is best for me. And so having that mind over matter, it, it was just so amazing. And to hear Rebecca's story, it just reminded me that I share my story to help others know that there are ways to get through this kind of thing. Even if you have a different form of medical issues, like that's all right. Like maybe it's not even like health related and stuff's just going on. You know, it's mind over matter. Like yeah, there's negative stuff no matter what. Find something positive and try and focus on that. And, you know, I always say it, there's always tomorrow. I went through radiation, one day down, only this more to go. Well, I don't 
I'm not at that point where it's like, okay, this day down, this many more to go because there's no end for me here. And so it's like, this is one of the reasons why I like to share these moments. It's like, I just told you my, um, dropping it, Thanksgiving fun facts to show that I'm doing well in brain therapy. Even though I definitely wrote some down funny, like the white headed eagles. It's still like, I still laugh at that or that the Californians are the, the largest consumers of turkey. Like that blows my mind. And it's like compared to like where I was at going through my standard of care with chemo and radiation, like, and where I'm at now, it's like, I still have short term memory issues, but I'm working through it and I'm not letting it keep me down from anything. And so it's just like, like I said, just if you know anyone at all, just take a moment, send them happy thoughts, you know, any positive way that you can share. If you are a strong believer in faith and healing by prayer, that would be awesome to go that way. Or if you just, you know, maybe just take a moment, close your eyes, take a deep breath and say, thank you that I am a strong person with great health. And even if you don't have it right now, know that you will if you put in that mind over matter thought, that mind over matter that Rebecca is sharing with others, despite actually having chemotherapy right now, such like high doses that just, they just get rough. And sometimes you just don't even want to do it. And she has this huge form of cancer and she is sharing mind over matter with other people. So if she can share it, so can you. So take a moment, think something positive her way if you can. I'd rather you spend time praying or sending positive thoughts to this woman named Rebecca, who is a breast cancer survivor, now fighting through pancreatic cancer, who is so positive to share this with others. Just, I thank God so much that she is able to do that through this treatment. Like, that is amazing. Oh my gosh, plus we have Chadwick, you know, the Black Panther that like went through all of those movies in between his treatments. It's like we have these people who take their moments in these break times to share so much. So just know like you have something to share too. Even if you're really introverted, just remember there is something for you. Just like how Thanksgiving is coming up and we're going to share some turkey, probably some pumpkin pie. There's always something. If you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, find something to do with your friends. Maybe have a Friendsgiving. Something where you just take that day and just like you're with people that you love and enjoy. Whether they're friends, family, or you're sitting in a hospital getting your your port is just like getting chemotherapy pumped through. Look at a patient next to you and say, hey, everyone is having a good day, so let's have one too. I know that this has gotten very, very long, and I apologize in advance. I already forget if I said it or not, but me having really long videos and not staying as focused as being regular with these vlogs, I have this new, like, actual blog. My website is Brain Cancer Survivor Rose, and I'm focused on one thing at a time for the most part. And I, so I just started this, and my goal is, um, each Monday morning-ish to have something new and it's it's to help me with my my brain my short-term brain thoughts but every time I have a thought it is also about staying positive for myself and for others around me I hope you have a great night I hope you had a great sleep last night with daylight savings and even though sunset is earlier I hope you have a great night tonight too, okay? My animal friends here say goodnight, and as do I, hope you have a great night. Also, if you watch this, I hope you at least double speed to me before you get like bored and like change channel. Okay, all done. <laughs> have a great night.